Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated, and this is High King Rodoin. After a bit of a makeover, I've changed him from the Norse clothing and the Norse crown that he was wearing at the end of the last episode to at least keep the thumbnails some way consistent. And his name, I've seen from a paper on bogus Irish saints. It seems to be a transcription error. So Saint Ruoin was mistakenly transcribed in one of the chronicles as Saint Rodoin, and a bogus Irish saint was created. And that name might have appeared, if it's in the chronicles, it might have appeared in Medieval Scotland, the Medieval Scotland website, which has all the names from the chronicles, and I think that's where Paradox gets its names list for Ireland and for Scotland. So that's possibly how this name came about, but he should be Ruoin. At the moment, he's not going to be doing much, though, because Ireland is still plagued with camp fever, the disease which claimed his predecessor. I have a feeling it's beginning to quieten down. It might claim a few more lives, first of all, but I think it's being beginning to quieten down. So for now, Ruoin is going to just chill out. And while we're chilling out in the court, we as might as well get some redecorating done. A mysterious figure is offering us the chance to build some murder holes and priest holes. A series of spying holes where my courtiers gather, please. So we lose 50 gold, gain 10 court grandeur and some scheme discovery chance. And you know what? We might be able to pay for the redecorating straight away by levying a royal aid duty to pay for our wedding to High Queen Estefina. But before it goes, it looks like Camp Fever is going to claim the life of our vassal Waluigi, our heir and the son of the previous ruler, our predecessor, Flanacoin Longsword, who was also taken by Camp Fever. And the awkward thing here is if Sovna dies, then his mother will inherit. And then, from there, it will pass, I believe, into the kingdom of Lothringa. So this is Ivonia. So this is going to be awkward. This is an enemy I cannot protect him from. Wah. And he might be dying, but he still has ambition. Sovna has created a faction to install himself on the throne of Ireland. Good luck with that. And we've got to pop up that our Archbishop has died. I think this is the fourth, at least, the fourth Archbishop that has been claimed by Camp Fever. And there on the corner we can see that our heir, Chieftain Sovna, has, and indeed he has. Which means that Ivonia is now the property of his mother. She is dying. On her death, it will pass out of the Kingdom of Ireland and become part of the Kingdom of Lothringa. However, I could fight that small child. I could totally fight that small child, and I'd be, I'd be pretty confident to beat him as well. That small child has a lot of problems at the moment. If I was to try and revoke this title right now, it would cause a hit to legitimacy, and would be considered an act of tyranny. So for now, Rodoin will continue to do nothing and prepare to fight a small child. And again, the succession has been thrown into chaos. There is no agreement amongst the electors. Nobody has received more than a single vote from any of the electors. So for now, we're going to back the candidate favoured by our father, and that is our brother, Kunla. So, a fairly good... A fairly good intrigue character. 17. I think it's unlikely that we'd see him become High King. But uh, for now, until somebody better pops up, he will serve as a suitable successor in the event that something does indeed happen to High King Rodoin. And there we can see that Lothringa has now established itself in Connacht. 
which is also the last bastion of camp fever. It is indeed dissipating how well it had to take out. It basically killed Flanacoin, his son, and his wife. So it's killed three members of the family, thrown this region into chaos. Ended our dreams of putting a member of the Enail on a random throne in uh, somewhere in France, I think. So what we're going to do is wait until that has dissipated uh, completely, and then we're going to attack. I'm not going to leave it too long, though, because I don't want Lothringa to get any of its forces or allies together. And there we go, we just got to pop up that our court physician's knowledge has increased as a result of the plague, which has now faded away. And the Earldom of Mayo has become a haven for the survivors of the plague, the poor things. We must spare no expense to rebuild. And we must waste no time in ejecting Lothringa from Ireland. I think we will leave Gotthard in control of the army because unless there's an actual battle, he's the best man at knocking down walls and attacking fortifications. And in the midst of all the anarchy, fate smiles upon me. Estefina is pregnant. And we're seeing Lothringa attempting to bring in forces. Now our problem is that we have 7% war score. It's going to take a while to try to get the rest of that up. Rodoin will take command of the forces that have been landed in Ireland. They have other battles that they're fighting that I would have thought would have been more would have been more important to them. Oh, they've got away the devils. I bet you anything they're making for the Wicklow Mountains. So here's an attempt to get the King of Connacht spreading the legend of our grandfather. It doesn't make an ounce of a difference. Ireland already has the um, the legend in totality spread throughout the entire country. So our champion... I'm not too sure was our champion wounded or did they wound somebody? So Gotthard is A-OK. -okay. I think everybody on our side seems to be A-OK. -okay. They got a good chunk of kills in. They have... They don't really have better knights. But uh, they have less knights, so they were going to get a higher total. Well, there you go. We have 35% war score. And I think now it's just a matter of waiting. Now, here's a man that we've been having some problems with. I think it was Flanacoin. He demanded a courtier from Flanacoin to be returned to him. It's the King of Aquitaine, our brother-in-law. And by all accounts, he is plotting to murder our wife, Estefina. I don't think she's heir or anything like that. She doesn't appear anywhere on the line of succession, so I'm not too sure. Maybe, uh, maybe she bullied him as a child or something. The Friendless Fiend. Now, the Absolute Devils, I don't know how they managed it, but they've, they've managed to get a, a force of 750 in behind the back of us. And to make things worse, Owen is telling us that High Chieftain Donal is keeping secrets of a terrible and most alarming nature from us. Who is High Chieftain Donal? Oh, our dad. Right, well, he will reveal the secret to us. Our father is a cannibal. Well. We'll, um... We'll send him a letter. That... He has a grandson. I don't think... I don't think we'll be sending Rory to visit him at, uh, at any stage. My father is a cannibal. So we've managed to hit another one of Lothringa's fleets, or their forces, and they're sending another 
chunk these guys just landed that's the first army that we defeated and they're uh, they're leaving again i think we'd probably want to stay where we are because they're going to keep coming back for Dunvon the Galava. There we go. I was going to say what I might need to do at some stage is actually split the army. We'll rush these guys up because they're attempting another naval invasion. And our sister has died in a tragic carp accident. Estefina is with child again. And we can see that there is a massive war going on at the moment. Our father is trying to lay claim to the Earldom of Brefni. So I think he's at war with Flanshina. And we're going to get him to, to end that war. Flanshina is currently winning. I was just thinking it might be handy because then we'd inherit Brefni and then we could give it back to Connacht. But for now, we will ask our father to stop eating people, or to, uh, to stop the vassal war. And in the midst of all this chaos, we have gained ourselves a martial perk. I would like to start going down the overseer route for the control growth. I think we're okay at the moment for that. So household guard will increase the number of knights. Now, this is a bit of a problem. Here is our stepdaughter, the Duchess of Kent, and she has decided that because we are allied to her, that she is going to begin to throw her weight around and she is attacking the Prince of England. In an attempt to take Dorset, we're going to accept. She's already up to an 18% war score, so we're going to hang around for a moment just to see if the if Lotharinga will show up. That would be fantastic if they did. If we could give them one more belt, I'd say that would finish it off. And we have here an opportunity to lose some stress by saying that the legend of the Red Hand of Ulster is about A and no one else. Uh, this would take us ages to get to. She's fine. She's grand. If, if anything happens, we'll come in and give her a hand, but she's fine. I'm not going marching my army all the ways over there for nothing. By the time we'd get over there, the war would be over. And all of this stress of the war against Lothringa that's going on, of the attempt to kill her by her brother, and the fact that her daughter is waging a war in the south of England. All of this stress has resulted in the loss of our daughter, my daughter in heaven. So fair play to her, she's taken Dorset all by herself. So that war has ended. We can embellish the story of the Red Hand of Ulster. We'll go over it once more. 81% chance that we'll gain some prestige because we have taken a bit of a bathering to our prestige. And now we can enforce our demands to seize control of Ivonia from a small child. Now we could, with the forces that we have, complete the conquest of Ireland. Here is the Isles with 2200 troops and they seem to actually be in some form of a an internal war well i won't call it an internal war but uh, the remnants of the viking forces of the isles which has split up there's some battle going on what we're going to do instead is convert our forces to raiding we're going to be able to push a bit into scotland i'm not too sure what we'll be able to get done before parts get raided down. I think we're going to have to head down in this direction. We need to get some money together. And even though Ruwain has gotten off to a great start by conquering a territory, that's kind of just the restoration of the kingdom as it was under his predecessor. We need money and we need something to legitimize his rule. The little devil was trying to convert Ivonia to Catholicism. You devil, go away with that. Back to Luxembourg with you. Now we've just gotten the kind of mixed news that a duke in Cornwall has started to promote the legend of the Red Hand of Ulster. That's all well and good, but we kind of need to be focusing on this region. I'm disappointed it hasn't actually spread into Scotland, what's left of the Kingdom of Alba. But if we can get four more baronies, we have the money to upgrade it. Just about. 
well, that cost, that's going to be a hefty cost. And at the moment, the only way that we can pay that is through getting money together by raiding. So we have decided to just slap ourselves down in the middle of a series of wars. And we've raided down the Isle of Man, and now Man's forces are raiding down Ulster. So what we can do is bring our forces back in to attack them. I think there's some... Um, Galloway's forces are actually going to come across and hit us first of all, potentially. So that might be our Folder's army. Went in against the Isles. Or in against Man, I should say. And we have managed to seize the Manx War Banner. I survey the battlefield, contemplating how this battle will be remembered and gaze towards the dead that remain, I notice a group of my soldiers approach and they politely bow before me. My lord, we cornered the remaining enemies as they made a valiant stand. They gave their lives protecting this banner. So we could burn it for 75 prestige, or we could add it to our collection. So it's prestige per level of dread, 0.0. .0 zero two and court grandeur bonus plus two that's actually quite handy and glory hound vassal opinion plus three we'll stick it up on the wall so there we have the red hand of ulster behind the throne and over there is the manx war banner there's a lot of forces wandering around here that we have antagonized there is one of galloway's forces and another has started raiding down Ulster again, so we're going to have to come back with the little bit of money that we have. I think they're heading out to sea. And in the midst of it all, this damn blasted moron, I can't believe he's only 33, has sent us an alliance negotiation. A of Orkney. A mock A. It was the numerous wars that were waged by and against this lad that dragged A. Finlia into the north of Scotland, where he was captured. And ended up in Hastings prison for, uh, for a period of, of time. And basically, uh, his war, A's war on Alba, allowed the Isles to come in and take a large chunk. I know they hit Inverness first of all, and then Murray. And now he has ended up up here. We'll accept. I'm not too sure is Onya, any relative of ours, our aunt. This is, of course, somebody who suffered Donegal Syndrome. She was taken from her father, who has completely lost his lands. He ended up, he took Connacht, was then pushed down to Leinster when Flannacoin came to power and land was taken off of him. He was pushed down to Leinster randomly and then somebody took that off of him. Oh, go away from me. Now this just shows you the anarchy that the Isles has collapsed into. Flanchina and his pet cat are on the verge of seizing control of Dublin. I was going to leave it as a, a raid target. I'm kind of disappointed I didn't hit it first of all now. But the Isles is being utterly ripped apart by wars from Ireland. I know Ulster... Our father was involved in one war in this region at one stage against the Isles, which has split apart into the Isles and the Isles and the Isles. My intention had been to petition the Pope for a claim on Galloway, but the problem is that once the Isles split apart, they all converted to Catholicism or to Insularism very quickly to prevent that from happening. So who do we have in Galloway? This is somebody completely different. And they are Insular Gaelic. Uh, Insular Gaelic. Insular Gaelic. So these guys weren't part of the Isles, but they are the, uh, the closest Norse to us, and we do not border them, so we cannot get claims on anyone. Now, one Viking power is on the verge of collapsing, and another one arrives. We have Jarl. With 8,000 men at his disposal. And he has set his sights 
an Ulster. There's no point rallying the troops. They're already rallied. Now at the moment we are badly cut for allies and alliances. And we're going to have to try and secure one with Iceland. This is the daughter of the Jarl of Iceland. He could bring in 2,100 troops, which would bring us up to a grand total of just short of 5,000. I think about 6,000 with our allies. So we're going to send that proposal. And we do actually have the money to pay off the invading Norse horde. However, Rodoin is brave and stubborn. We'll banish these invaders as we've always done. Now, our only hope with our new alliance is to to hit them where they come ashore. That's really the only hope that we have. We've unlocked a new lifestyle perk, but none of them are of much use to us in our current predicament. We'll take promising prospects. And I think for now, with Rodoin commanding the forces, I'm going to switch to chivalry focus for that advantage. We can see another 1,200 allies approaching. And here is the main invasion fleet, and that's the worst thing, is it's sailing down the coast. I'm not too sure what direction they're actually going in. I was hoping that they'd come ashore in Ulster. And we also don't have Iceland yet. So they're landing in Leinster. Which is interesting. Our wife has given birth to a daughter, Mwirin. May you grow to be strong and wise and alliance material, my daughter. And unfortunately for now, we're going to have to pull back our forces and wait because we're not going to be able to hit them in time. They have the disembarkation penalty for four days. It's going to be 18 days before we hit their army. We have failed to stop them from coming ashore. They have taken us by surprise. And our poor daughter, Mwirin, we're going to organize a marriage to the son of the Duchess of Mercia, who is not in line to inherit. I'm not too sure what the scenario is. Pants on fire might have something to do with it, but it will bring in 1,300 soldiers. The only other option is to form an alliance with man, and I don't think we're going to do that. Oh, these devils are delighted. Lancaster has joined the attack against us, and uh, they've just joined all of a sudden, yet they're somehow already sieging down Ulster. So we're going to have to pull back. I was, I was planning on getting into a position to attack the smaller army at some stage. But Lancaster has just joined the battle, and is already sieging down Ulla. So what a time to become the head of the Caelthcahoc dynasty. We're not going to ransom him out, but it is fully understandable as to why he has thrown his lot in with the Norse invaders. This is the second time that we have taken Ragnar hostage, so he's not, he's not best pleased with us. As for men, at this stage, let bygones be bygones. We're going to ransom Hastings' son back to him after seven years for 22 gold. Now, our kingdom is wracked by war. You can see Ulster has fallen to Galloway, who are trying to seize back some land from our father that he seized from them. I'm not too sure where. And we can see Iceland is currently in Alba. So there's two wars that Iceland is involved in, so it's occupied at the moment. I'm... There's our father's army. I was trying to figure out where he was. Yeah, never mind the fact that there's an 8k Norse fleet trying to take Ulster. Never mind that. No, you you keep at whatever you're doing. Don't let me disturb you. I would like to try and get over and siege down Lancaster, but we're not going to be in a position to to do that if these guys make it up. I'm just hoping that they they basically take some attrition. 
Now here is something interesting. They are heading out to sea, having taken Ormond and Leinster. And they're coming back into Leinster. I don't know if we're going to be able to hit them. I don't think so. Not with the way things are looking. That embarkation is up in 19 days, and that battle, if it's telling us, or if we'll have a battle... So the recent disembarkation penalty is 11 days. We'll hit them in 7. But then they'll bring that that other army in against us. I think we're going to have to risk it at this stage. So we've gotten in early. Dealt some heavy damage to them. Gotten our allies in. And we've managed to get to a 100% war score. The first thing we're going to do is break that betrothal with Iceland. Look, I know they were in wars of their own, but they were of no use to us whatsoever. And with Rodoin in charge, the army has been converted over to a raiding army and will be sent in against Galloway to start with, but then down into Lancaster, Lancashire, we will raid the entire region to the ground while we still have its Jarl in our dungeons. And just to take a look at the slaughter at Athai, we lost 433 men to their entire army. Their entire army was wiped. They don't seem to have done great. It was mostly comprised of levies. And if we look at the champions, they had no champions. So we have Ricardo, who has a couple of inspirations at the moment. Uh, he has one anyway. Gotthard. In at 84. Look at the career that that man has had. There's Cullum, the acclaimed knight, the Red Branch Knight. Now we had somebody injured. And look, considering the fact that he has assisted in saving the kingdom, Ricardo, one of the two highest scoring knights in terms of kills in that battle, we will give him the 183 gold. That he wants to go to Eastern Europe on a bit of a holiday. And as we're predominantly going down the galleon tree side of the military focus trees at the moment, we will romance our wife. I think we'll impress her by winning a sparring match. It seems appropriate for Rodoin. Estefina won't resist my charms for long. To the sensible High King Rodoin of Ireland, I cannot stand this imprisonment any longer. Let me out, please. Fine, I'm sick of listening to you. So the last thing that we need to kind of complete the legend of the Red Hand of Ulster is if we could get Alba to start promoting the legend. So I went to take a look at Alba. This guy looks familiar. And so does his daughter. It's the Duke of Iceland. It's the Earl of Iceland. He's conquered Scotland, so that's what he was doing up there. He's not too happy with us after we broke that betrothal. So this entire region has now fallen to Norse Catholics, even though I think a couple of them have converted or have become Gaelic. They've all become Gaelic, except for this new introduction. And Northumbria has taken the Isle of Man. Oh, these damn Norse. I don't care what that says. These damn Norse. What did I just say? What did I just say about the damn Norse? Deviants. The lot of them. Look at this. This lad running around the court, half naked, defiling my favorite embroidered cloak. How could you? To the dungeons with you. God damn it, what the hell was he doing with my cloak that he's near death? I was going to recruit him and demand his conversion because, I mean, he might be a deviant, but he's also a Varengian. He's also dying, so instead, we'll ransom him out to himself for a tenor. Now, this guy isn't in much better conditions. He's ill. But he is a berserker and a holy warrior. 
We will negotiate his release. We will recruit him, or try to at least. So we can see, I think, the Isles has 2,600 troops raised against us. I think they might be hostile because we're raiding, or they've gone to war with somebody, or somebody has ended up in a war, I'm not too sure. But Ricardo, after we sent him out to Eastern Europe, with 183 gold, he proudly holds up a package securely wrapped in cloth. He returns with the hide of the beastly fox of Kindal. 0 0.01 prestige per month. This is magnificent, and he gains the trait Adventurer. So we will place that above the throne, looking down on our drunken wife. We're getting another inspiration request. Just as we hit poor Owl Chieftain, or Jarl Ragnar, again. We didn't manage to capture him, but we've captured his wife. This man must hate us at this stage. We have also made a beautiful cocktail of blood and dirt. Oh no, we found a doll. And you know what? Let's bring it home to Rory. We took three prisoners in that raid. These two I'm sending back just for weak hooks. But here is Jarl Ragnar's wife. The amount of money we've taken off of this man. He could only give us two gold at the moment. She is shoving on in years. We do have to think about that. We could recruit her maybe as our physician. That mightn't be a great idea. Do you know what? I think because he's actually losing money. He's actually losing money. Go on. Let's bankrupt the poor man. And we could actually put that two gold towards the creation of a suit of armor. Considering that we got a hide for 183, 61, that's either a bargain or very weak armor. We will sponsor this. And I think we will go with laminar armor, sturdy and reliable. And as part of the armor's creation, we must think of somebody to dedicate it to. And we're going to dedicate it to Lop, the master of the hunt, to Fibris, the king of Aquitaine, a man that we haven't been getting on very well with, slash our brother-in-law, but Lop the Handsome is also our uncle through marriage. And he joined us in that last great battle against the Viking horde that menaced Ireland to Lop. And while throwing back another beautiful cocktail of blood and dirt, we have found another doll. This one we'll give to Mwirin. And as we continue our campaign into the north of Wales, we receive the devastating news that Jacob has died. Our caravan master of old age. He has a son who is going down the martial lifestyle focus. And is currently being trained by Gotthard. So this is somebody to watch out for to see what uh, what he makes of himself as a knight in the kingdom. We have another lifestyle perk for the Galleon Tree. Loyalty and respect. Spouse opinion, plus 50. And skills from spouse. Counselor tasks go up by 25%. And we've just received the terrible news that our mother has been captured by High Chieftain Citric of the Isles, who actually asked us twice to marry two separate ants. So he wanted to marry one ant and then another, but he has raided down, down Patrick, and has captured our mother. So I think this is actually as part of a war that he's currently engaged in against our father. Oh, they're still fighting over that place. And for only the second time, we get to add to the Caeth Cahak dynasty legacies. The King of Scotland 
did so once already, when he was the head of the dynasty. We added heroes of old. So we have a mighty endeavor for Kaed Kahak. We're currently trying to finish the Red Hand of Ulster before thinking about going on to that. Mythical Ancestors grants access to the ancestral claim causus belli on any claims gained through a legitimizing legend. I don't think that's of any tremendous use, but you know what? We'll take it. And not alone has Citric captured our mother, but he's trying to put bad ideas into our head, telling us of the legacy of Arthur Pendragon. Poppycock. And we've been told that one of our vassals has been taken prisoner. I think we've also taken a prisoner ourselves. And our champion has appeared before us with the Kael Kahak Laminar Armor. Prowess of plus four, prestige of 0 0.01 per month, controlled territory defender advantage in honor of our defense of Ireland. A tiny but elegant inscription runs on its side, dedicating it to a stalwart friend, Lop the Handsome. Magnificent. And you know what? We will take bounteous plunder to make up for the the money that we just spent there. So I believe that was Chieftain Liaura, our spymaster, that has been taken prisoner. That's awkward. Flanchina. Oh, Flanchina, you devil. He seems to be the best. Go on. And as we begin the arduous trek northwards to return to Ulster, Ruoin will don the Kaed Kahak armor. And there we see that our neighbor, High Chieftain Citric, has won against our father, Donal, in Donal's Conquest War. So somewhere was taken from the Isles, and they've managed to take it back. And our wife, Estefina, has given birth to another son, Sean. Sure. And we return home with 193 gold. And we're beginning to see Lanarkshire promoting our legend. We're still on 98 baronies. It is spread to 98. I'm not too sure. Is the legacy of Arthur Pendragon. There we go. Beginning to push up into our territory. I think Jacob was our last court chronicler who passed away recently. I've just appointed a new one to replace him and put them on commend legend abroad we need to push the legend into scotland and if the powers in this region will not adopt it themselves or even worse if they adopt one of the english legends pushing in this direction then we will have to force the legend upon them ruoin has put together a good war chest he has legitimized solidified and stabilized his rule in Ireland. The entire island is now under his jurisdiction as a result of Flanchina's march on Dublin. And he anticipates the wealth and military force that he will be able to exert when he inherits Ulster from his father. I think on the next episode we're going to have to look towards Scotland to finish off the Red Hand of Ulster. Thank you for joining me on this episode and I hope that you will join me on the next one because we might be doing a bit of artifact hunting.